Hello, everyone. Welcome to live from Eddie Mean's apartment. Uh, so today, I went to the grocery store to get something for breakfast, and um, I got distracted. I get distracted easily while I'm shopping. I I like to shop, uh, and so while while looking for breakfast food, uh, I came across this really cute pot. Look, look at this. Look at it. It's got bunnies on it, right? Super cute pot. Super cute pot. All right. So this is called a do nabe, uh, which means like a clay pot. And uh, there's my co-host Floki. He'll be in from time to time. And they're made for cooking lots of different things. Uh, you can cook rice in them. You can cook soups in them. Uh, but today we're going to cook hot pot. Now, what is hot pot? Uh, well, the two most famous kind of hot pots are shabu shabu, which is where you cook the meat in like a swishing motion in the boiling water. Uh, and there's also sukiyaki, which is where you sort of cook the meat first and then throw everything in on top of it. Uh, but today we're going to cook uh, we're going to cook a mix of the two because honestly, I don't actually know how to make either of those things traditionally. Um, so first, we need <clears throat> this. This is a gas con. It's a gas range top. Um, it's a super tatsujin slim by Iwatani. So first we'll need this. We will also need dashi or soup broth, uh, whatever you want to call it. It's pre-made. You can make it from scratch, but that takes too long. This is called gifu tanmen. Uh, it says it's uishi, which means delicious, so we'll find out. On the back, it has suggested uh, ingredients. You can see there's things like garlic, chili peppers, cabbage, butter. Uh, I'm not putting butter in this. That seems gross. Uh, but what we are going to put in is some tofu. Some mushrooms. Some thinly, thinly, thinly sliced pork. Uh, and then my favorite thing, so a lot of Japan doesn't have prepackaged stuff, uh, but sometimes during hot pot season, you can buy things like this. And this is a giant bag full of hot pot vegetables. Uh, there's Chinese cabbage, which is here in the back. There's uh, erengi, Enoki, enoki mushrooms, which are the long little stalk ones you see here. There's like one slice of carrot. Um, there's Japanese green onion. And then I can't remember what these things are called. These little green bits in the front, but everything is tasty. And it's already pre-cut and washed and ready to use. So the first thing we have to do is get a beer. Um, so the best thing about Japan is you can buy these glass bottles. Like this is not like a, a normal size beer, right? Uh, I came from the grocery store. They packaged them with foam. Uh, this is a can of beer for reference. And this is the party size bottle. I don't know. Uh, but I, I like to drink while I'm cooking. So got my little Daiso Shakuin 100 yen store beer cup. And first... As all cooking shows should start, we're going to start by pouring some beer and having a drink. So um, I've only recently gotten back to America. I went to, uh, back to America, back to Japan. I was in America for a little while, uh, mostly to go to Disney World. If you guys follow me on Twitter, you <laughs> have been inundated by exceedingly obnoxious amounts of Disney World pictures, but come pipe. That's Asahi. I'm actually a Sapporo girl, but the Sapporo doesn't come in the glass bottles. So we've got our beer. We have all our ingredients. We have our clay pot. We need fire. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna move this closer to my computer. I I, I haven't actually turned this on. There's a, a little gas bottle in here. I'll hope I don't blow anything up. Oh, all right. We have fire. Ooh. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to turn that down. And the clay pot just literally goes onto the fire. And then the soup mix goes into the pot. 
And we're gonna open this. Um, also, you're like, Erica, why are you cooking in your living room? Um, I'm sitting at a kotatsu, which is a table that has a heater underneath and I've got a blanket. Uh, there's a two top, a two top, uh, two part top to it. Um, we're just gonna pour our soup of broth in. Ooh. Finished. Um, and it's warm uh, because it's started to get cold here in central Japan. So instead of running the heater, which is up above me, I don't know, you can't see it, but it's up above me. Um, I'm sitting on this thing. Wow. Oh, you can't smell that, but it smells like delicious garlic amazingness. So I'm going to turn the heat. Nope, not down up. Uh, I'd like to preface this by saying I've never made this before. So if anything blows up, <laughs> you guys will get to see it live uh, on the internet. So we put the hot pot on here. This is very hot. Like it's, it's, it's already quite hot. It's earthenware. So we're just going to um, put the lid on here and let the broth heat up. And I'm going to talk to you fine folks on the internet. So uh, I went to America. I went to Disney World. I did some legal stuff. <laughs> I have the worst timing ever because I didn't realize that it was Fan Fest at Neutral Zone Studios um, where they filmed, I guess it formerly, formerly Stage 9. I can't remember what it was, where we filmed Star Trek Continues. Uh, and I didn't realize until we were like halfway through Georgia going past Kingsland that Vic and them were all down there for the Fan Fest thing. And I was like, ah, oh, darn it. We should turn around and go back so I can get pictures. Uh, but I was not the driver, and I had a meeting with a lawyer to sign some paperwork uh, for an unrelated matter. <laughs> so I didn't get to stop, but man, I have the worst timing. Uh, but anyways, did Disney World. Oh man, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, and Galaxy's Edge was amazing. Oh my gosh, it's so immersive. I loved it. A lot of the characters you interact with um, they're there for a good amount of time. And so like we interacted with this one guy who looked like he came out of a almost a steampunk workshop thing. We ran into him earlier in the day, didn't know who he was. Um, and then when we went back to do the lightsaber build, it turns out he's the guy that walks you through the lightsaber building. And he was like, oh, I see some familiar faces in here. And he was talking to me, it was amazing. Um, and I, I kept getting stopped by the stormtroopers because I was wearing, um, uh, an orange and white dress. It's made to look like the X-Wing pilot suits um, made by L. Hoffer Design. There's a plug for you. I love her stuff. She makes great geek uh, clothing. Amazing. Check her out. L. Hoffer Design. Uh, also not sponsored by anybody except for, I wish Sapporo would sponsor me, but this video is sponsored by my job, which pays my bills. So uh, it was really great though. Um, I got stopped by the stormtroopers like every time I saw them. And then one time I got stopped by Kylo Ren and the Stormtroopers, which was extra amazing. Um, and it seemed to me that the easiest way to get the Stormtroopers to interact with you was if you saw them and then you pretended to run away from them. Uh, so sort of baiting them a little bit. Let's check this out. Nope, not boiling yet. Uh, as I've said, I don't know how to make this. I'm just sort of, I can't also, I can't read kanji. Um, so. This stuff smells so good, you guys. Um, so, I mean, I'm just following the pictures and the first picture uh, appears to say, shake the soup. The second picture appears to say something along the lines of, when the soup, it, put the soup on high and bring it to a boil and then put the meat in. And then the third picture is just all of the vegetables on top. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, if I get food poisoning, I'll let you guys know, but the uh, the garlic smell coming out of this is incredible. <clears throat> so yeah, so did Star Wars, uh, Galaxy's Edge, uh, went, went, went ham. I spent, I spent a lot of money um, <laughs> at Galaxy's Edge for the full authentic Star Wars experience of building a lightsaber and buying costumes. And you can't really see it because there's a glare, but I also have a lightsaber back there that I built and a holocron and um, lots of kyber crystals. So, you know, I went crazy. We stayed at the Grand Floridian, which was underwhelming. 
Um, I was really disappointed. I've been wanting to stay at the Grand Floridian forever. Um, and considering it's the most expensive hotel on Disney property, it's supposed to be the creme de la creme a la Edgar uh, of the properties. Um, just the service was good, sort of. Um, like we, I ordered the, my friend that went with me, it was the first time he had ever been to Disney. And so I ordered like a special cake and all the stuff to show up the night we arrived at a specific time because I knew I was going to be jet lagged and I'm like, get there, get the cake, eat the cake, go to sleep. Uh, because we were supposed to be up at 4 AM to go to star Wars the next morning. And I didn't get into Orlando until eight. Everything was messed up because of the typhoon. Uh, it's a long story. Uh, but like the cake didn't show up like I was waiting like 1030 came which is when it was supposed to arrive 1040 came 1050 came and I was like well if we don't go to the bar and get drinks now we're not going to have time so we left um, and while we ordered our drinks I ran down to the front desk and was like well, what's going on and they're like oh your cake was delivered and I was like no it wasn't not in the time frame it was supposed to be there at 1030 uh, and we were there until 1050 when we walked out and went to the bar and they were like, oh, well, it says they delivered it. And I'm like, well, they didn't deliver it within 30 minutes, 20 minutes of the, the, the time it was supposed to be delivered. So we left. Uh, get back there. It turns out, sorry, I'm going to keep checking this because I can sort of hear it bubbling, but we'll see. Anyways, uh, so they did bring the cake and the cake was good. And they did take care of us. Like they, they comped, I didn't ask for anything, but they comped half of our drinks in the bar that night, which... I think we drank $120 worth of alcohol. Um, that was only like six drinks, mind you, but this is Disney World. Um, and that was very nice of them. They didn't have to do that. But then when they cleaned the room the next day, the housekeeping took the plate and the glasses from the, the cake and thing and put it outside the door and then never came back for it. Uh, it was sitting outside the door when we came back from the park uh, for our midday break. When we left to go back to the park for the second half of the day, it was still there. When we came back from the park at like 11, it was still there. When I got up the next morning, I walked out the door, I about stepped on it because I was thought surely it wouldn't be there and walked out the door, it was still there. Uh, and so I went down and had um, a strongly worded conversation with the concierge. Uh, but yeah, so Grand Floridian, beautiful, but our service was actually quite poor. Uh, all right, hey, we're cooking with gas, literally. Hello, Smoking Skull. Welcome to uh, Hot Pot Cooking with me. Um, you guys are coming on my adventure. So the soup stock is now boiling, and we're going to take our extra long. These are cooking chopsticks. They are very long. They are like twice as long as a regular pair of chopsticks. And we are going to take our very, very, very thinly sliced pork, and we are going to, uh, well, I, uh, we're gonna pull it apart somehow. There we go. Oh, oh, there we go. And we're just gonna, ooh, we're gonna sort of shabu shabu it. Uh, shabu shabu is an onomatopoeia, uh, which means a word that represents a sound. Uh, Japanese love it. And it basically just means to swish the meat back and forth. And it cooks very quickly. This stuff is paper thin, maybe thinner than paper thin almost. Um, also, I learned that Shabu Shabu is an onomatopoeia from uh, the Abroad in Japan uh, podcast. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, I don't know when you subscribe, but thank you for subscribing, Smoking Skull. Uh, I appreciate you being here on my cooking adventures. I've, You know what? We're just going to don't tell anybody because it's, it's our secret, all two of us. Uh, we're just going to drop the meat in here and we're just going to swish it around. I'm sure you can do this. This is this is perfectly fine. Um, and yeah, so, um, I've really been into the abroad in Japan podcast recently. If you guys like Japan, um, the tagline is it's the closest you can get to being in Japan without actually being in Japan or something like that. Um, Chris Broad is amazing. He is a British man who lives in Northern Japan and he does this amazing podcast and he also has an amazing, uh, YouTube channel. So if you guys want to know a lot more about like, he, he goes out and films things. Uh, I like to stay in my apartment. I work five days a week and I'm exhausted. This just happens to be a holiday for us today. So um, <laughs> that's why you're getting a cooking show. Um, but yeah, uh, amazing podcast, amazing videos, all kinds of cool stuff. He's great. Uh, I like Chris Broad 
and Pete Donaldson from the Football Ramble, Rumble, Rabble. I don't know. It's a British radio show about football, soccer for Americans. But our meat is in the pot. Step one. Now, according to the picture on the back of this, the next thing is to dump literally all of the vegetables in. So uh, we have all of the vegetables here in this pre-cut pack, which is amazing. Japan does not pre-cut or pre-do much of anything, uh, but this is great. So we're just going to take a handful, and this is Chinese cabbage. We're going to drop it over here. And actually, we're going to turn the heat down. Oh, that's not down. That's not down. Hold the crap. Uh, I'm not used to cooking with gas. Oh, okay. You can go. I'm just cooking. I'll be here cooking and drinking and talking about random stuff. Probably for the next, I don't know, 45 minutes. However long it takes for me to cook and eat this hot pot. Uh, so we got our Chinese cabbage. Uh, these are my favorite mushrooms in the whole world. Look how cute they are. They remind me of those little things from Princess Mononoke. The little mushrooms in their heads go doing. Um, I love them. They're called enoki mushrooms. Um, and so we're going to put the, oh, I don't think the bottoms are, oh, well, we're going to put those in there. You're supposed to cut the bottoms off. So uh, then we're going to put in this little green bit of stuff. Yes. And we're going to grab our green onions. Got some green sliced Japanese negi onion. Uh, oh, 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 man, this is great. This is all pre-made. What's down here? Uh, oh, oh, I was wrong. There are two slices of carrot. Bye-bye. Uh, and then I also wanted to eat some uh, mushrooms, some big sh shimeji mushrooms. Shimeji, I think. Um, they don't come with the little cross on the top. I cut the cross in because uh, that's how they typically look like on all the pictures. So, uh-oh, I've turned it too far down. It stopped bubbling. Ah! All right, we're going to turn it back up. I've never cooked with gas on like a range top. I've only ever used it um, like in an oven before. So we're going to drop some mushrooms in here. And then we've got some tofu that I have already cut into conveniently bite-sized pieces. And we're going to drop that in there. Uh, oh, it looks so good. I wish you guys, oh, it's too bad there's no smell-o-vision because this smells amazing. Um, we're going to do that. And then we're going to take our... The lid is still really hot. We're going to take our lid and we're going to put that on there and we're going to let it cook for a few minutes. Um, I see a few people are watching. If anyone wants to ask questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to ramble on about how amazing uh, Galaxy's Edge was. Um, but anyways, Galaxy's Edge was amazing. Uh, and the Grand Floridian was sadly disappointing. I think if we, if I go back, well, I'm going back uh, maybe in a year or two once they've built the new Star Wars hotel. They were building it while I was there. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. <laughs> I love Star Wars so much. Uh, anyway, so, but overall, Disney trip was amazing. Uh, missed a day because of the typhoon that hit here. And then when we got to Florida, the last day, a tropical storm came through. It was just, the weather was not in it for us, but... Um, and I don't have anything to pick this up with when it gets too hot. Ah, uh, whatever. Well, by then I'll have had enough beer. It won't matter. Um, but so I got back to Japan a week and a half ago, uh, was massively jet lagged, got in at like six into Tokyo, took the Shinkansen, the bullet train, um, from Tokyo to Nagoya and then local train back to my house. And then I went to work the next day. Uh, and the next day, and the next day, and then Monday, I woke up, and I was like, oh, I don't feel so well, <laughs> and I was running about 101 degree fever, uh, and so that was when I made the uh, look at the auto-filling bathtub video. I was so sick. I don't know what I was doing. It just seemed like a good idea at the time. I was just like, yeah, I bet people would like to see my automatically filling bathtub, um, so that's what I did. I filmed that. Uh, and I've been sick ever since. My fever has been coming and going. I I, I was going to go to the doctor on Thursday, and then I got my health card out, and I was like, crap, it expired. And that requires you to go to City Hall, because everything is done at City Hall in Japan. And so, like, I got all, I literally, I have a 
two binders of every single paper I've ever received in Japan because they ask you for the most ridiculous nonsense when you have to go to City Hall to get something. Um, and so I brought like my giant tote bag with my binders and my little accordion folders full of all my pay slips for where I've been paying my health insurance. Went down there. The lady that was there spoke perfect English. It's the first time I've ever had that happen. And it was amazing. And I got my new health card. Um, but then by the time I finished everything, it, I wouldn't have had enough time to go to the doctor and then go to work. So I've just been going to work every day sick. And then today is a, ho a, ho a holiday, a hotel. I can't talk. Today is a holiday. And so in Japan, like the hospitals close. It's not like in America. I mean, like the emergency part of the hospital is open. But like the walk-in, I need help part for minor stuff is often closed and there are holiday clinics but they are massively more expensive than the regular thing uh so i've just been putting it off oh yeah look at that Ooh. all right we're gonna let it cook a little bit more i i don't there's no there's no time limit like on here it's not like cook for five minutes um it just says oh oh i think i'm supposed to I just noticed that it says the buta bada niku o furai pan day. I think I was supposed to cook the pork in a fry pan first. Whatever. Eh. Like I said, I have no idea how this is actually supposed to work. We're, this is going to be a mix between shabu shabu and um, sukiyaki. So whatever. It's whatever. So actually, we're going to go ahead and take the lid off now. This seems good. The mushrooms are looking squishy. Everything looks mostly cooked all the way through. Uh, and then we have our little stoneware uh, bowl and our little stoneware spoon. And so the first thing we're going to do is get a little bit of broth, just a little bit, just so we got a little flavor of some broth when we're eating. And then we're gonna take our ridiculously long cooking chopsticks and we're gonna just pick out some stuff. So yeah, I definitely did not cut the bottom off of the enoki mushrooms and now they're all stuck together. So we're gonna put some cabbage. Yeah, that's definitely cooked. Cabbage. Actually, let's let's turn the heat down. All right, let's see if I can remember. Up is down, up is down, yes. Turn, turn the heat down, turn the gas down. Uh, and we're gonna get a little bit of pork. There we go. And we're gonna grab us a piece of tofu, which I'm sure tofu doesn't have to be cooked, who knows. Uh, and I cannot believe I didn't cut the bottom off the enoki mushrooms and now they're all stuck together. So whatever, we're just gonna, ah, crap. Curses, curses, Chris Broad never had these kind of problems. Ah. Yeah, for anyone that wasn't here earlier, Chris Broad is a, a YouTuber who does videos about Japan. His podcast is called Abroad in Japan. And if you're, uh, he also has a YouTube channel. So if you guys are bored, I suggest you uh, take a listen to his stuff. Super entertaining, amazing. All right. It has now just come to my attention that I don't have a pair of chopsticks with which to eat. So I'm an idiot. Uh, let's see, did I not? No, I cannot believe, okay. I'm bad at this. This is uh, cooking with Erica. Ah, crap. Hold on, hold on. I gotta go get chopsticks to eat with. Ah. I'll be right back. Do, 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 do. Background music. Do, 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 Background music. Background music. Background music. Da, da, da. Background music. Background music, background music. Okay, I'm back. Chopsticks in hand. All right. Well, the mat on the floor is very slippery. Or the cushion on the floor. And I'm going to get back under my futon. Oh, these kotons. I tell you what, guys. If, like, if someone were to be, like, ranked the top most amazing Japanese inventions that you've encountered while you're in Japan, kotatsu is definitely near the top. These little heater-topped. Things are amazing and they're super economical. All right, let's see what this tastes like. Let's let's get raw meat off. Let's put it over here. All right, let's see. Let's see. What should we try first? Tofu. Let's try the tofu first. Hmm. 
Hmm, that's pretty good. Um, there are 8 million types of tofu. I have no idea what kind I was supposed to use in here. So I literally just looked at the packaging. Hello, Floki. See, now he wants to be on TV when there's food to be eaten. Mm. So I had no idea what kind of tofu I was supposed to use. So I literally just looked at the packaging and was like, this one has a picture of hot pot on it. Maybe this is hot pot tofu. <laughs> I can't, I can't read kanji. I'm sorry. Mm. Oh man, the broth on this is amazing. Let's see what the niku tastes like. Mm. So it's mostly just sort of like median and garlic flavor. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh, guys, this is amazing. So, yeah. Anyone have any questions? There's four or five of you in the chat. Um, but yeah, so that's cooking hot pot. And uh, I bought like the medium sized pot. It's not the small one, it's not the large one. It's supposed to be for like three to four people. But I was like, ah, oh, three to four Japanese people is probably like two Americans, two Westerners. So, mm. right. So <clears throat> that is amazing. Um, and then once you eat a lot of the veggies and stuff out, um, in sukiyaki, you dump in udon noodles uh, and cook that in the broth near the end. So later there will be some udon noodles going in. But yeah, so recently Japan has been hosting the Rugby World Cup and it has been crazy here. Transportation has been crazy. I'm going anywhere near, like I live sort of close to the Toyota Stadium, uh, and sort of close, relatively speaking, by train. Um, and <laughs> it's been crazy. Like, all the bars are packed. Uh, anytime the games are on, like, all the bars here are open late and extra. It's just been very busy. But uh, to the credit of all of the rugby fans, I have not heard of any shenanigans transpiring. So... Good job, Rugby World Cup fans. Um, you guys have done a great job of staying out of the media. Uh, there was a really, really, hello, Oogie. Uh, there was a really funny story about the Canadian rugby team who came off of their bus wearing yukata. And um, almost all of them had the yukata with the right over the left which is how they dress um, corpses. Generally, you wear it with your left over the right. But almost all of them had it on backwards, uh, and it was just the funniest thing. And a lot of them had shorts on underneath because the yukata were way too small for these massive, huge footballers. Or, ooh, I guess they're not footballers, rugby, rugbyers, rugby player. What, what, do you, what do you call someone who plays rugby? I don't know. Um, so, but that was a really funny story. Um, we are making hot pot. Well, actually, we already made the hot pot, and now I'm eating the hot pot. Mm. Really tasty. Oh, nope. Oh, I just almost committed a cardinal sin. I almost put my chopsticks in the hot pot. You are not supposed to do that. Now, granted, it's just me eating the hot pot, so it doesn't really matter, but obnoxiously long cooking chopsticks. Let's grab one of these bad boys. Mmm, delicious anime cut cross cut mushroom going in the pot. And let's get some more meat. Let's get some more meat. Ah, uh, yeah. Very tasty. And the rest of the mushrooms. Uh, and there's tons of vegetables left, so you could theoretically just add more vegetables if you wanted to. Mmm, uh, delicious hot pot. Uh, like I said, uh, it's sort of a mix. The, the two major hot pots in Japan are shabu shabu and sukiyaki. And I just, I'm not really sure. I think, 
I think in su su this is probably more like sukiyaki because we cook the meat first and then we threw all the vegetables on top where shabu shabu is like you're cooking the vegetables and then you sort of just swish the meat in an open spot between the vegetables. I think I have been to both shabu shabu and and sukiyaki and I, I still am not really sure. I don't know if Japanese people really eat it differently, but anyways, that this is how we ended up. We ended up eating nabe today because I went to the grocery store to buy breakfast food and I saw this amazingly cute rabbit printed, not, let's see, it's, it's pretty hot. It's really hot. You can see there's a little rabbit there. There's rabbits all over it. It's so freaking cute. Um, yeah, and I didn't even end up buying breakfast food. I like I bought the nabe and then I came home and I was cleaning and I was like, God, I didn't get breakfast food. So I was like, well, I gotta go back to the grocery store. Got in, I was like, what am I gonna eat? I was like, well, I did just buy a nabe. Maybe I should cook something. And then just spiraled out of control from there. So mm. let's eat some more of this delicious hot pot. Anybody got questions? I see y'all there. The internet doesn't lie. I can see you're there in the chat. Mm. Tofu, so good. You guys just gonna chill out and watch me eat? I've heard that's a thing. Is that a thing? Someone help me. Mm. Maybe I should start telling you guys my um, my Tinder Japan stories. All right, so I'm a I'm a I'm lonely. Uh, I've been here for almost three years now, and I've had a couple of boyfriends off and on, but I just work so everybody works so much here. We work so much. Oh God. Um, and so I often use like Tinder or Bumble to try to like get through like the first part of dating where it's like finding someone that speaks English and finding someone who has the same days off as I do, which is really important in Japanese society. Like if you don't have the same days off, it's a nightmare. Um, and so, but I have been on some epically bad dates. <clears throat> Just terrible. I had a Japanese man who showed up to our date wearing blue jeans and one of those Harley Davidson t-shirts that has like the wolf on the back like going, oh it looks like one of the weird Native American prints like something you'd find in like a gas station service station in America on the highway um and I mean that's fine I guess um he was wearing like work boots that were covered in mud Oh my gosh, Pensacola to New Orleans and back. That's, that's a long drive, Ogie. Is it Ogie? 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 I'm not really sure how to pronounce your username, bro. Mm. So, anyways, we'll call him Akun. Oh, Corona in the chat. Kurono, welcome. You've already missed the cooking portion and now we are in the eating portion of the hot pot um, adventure. Mm. We cook Japanese hot pot, sukiyaki, slash shabu shabu sukiyaki. I don't know, it was a hybrid. I'm not particularly great at reading stuff. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. But I am taking questions, and I was currently telling um, the viewers about a terrible, terrible Tinder Japan date I had. So anyway, Japanese man shows up in blue jeans, mud caked work shoes, and a Harley Davidson t-shirt with like a wolf on the back of it, like very spacey stars and stuff. And I'm like, okay, well, what, what are we gonna, what should we do? And he's like, oh, well, let's go to this place called Sasashima. And I'm familiar with it. There's an arcade and a movie theater and there's a live house where there are a lot of um, live shows. What do we call live shows in America? Oh my God, concerts. There we go. A lot of concerts and stuff like that. So we walk on down to Sasashima Live. It's about a five or 10 minute walk. Um, and we get there and we play some arcade games. I love arcade games. Ogiji. Ah, so this. Ah, 
I was going to say, that doesn't make any, I don't know what you were saying, Kudono, message redacted. Um, anyway, so we go down there, we play some video games, I kick his butt, I love video games so much, I'm a huge arcade fan, and I love, love that Japanese uh, still have arcades. Mm. Right, so we finish up, I'm like, all right, where do we want to go to eat? He's like, oh, I know the spot. And I'm like, okay. So, follow him. I kid you guys not. This 30-something-year-old Japanese man takes me to Moss Burger. Now, for those of you that don't know what Moss Burger, yes, beer. There is always beer. For those of you that don't know what Moss Burger is, Moss Burger is like a slightly better McDonald's. It's a fast food restaurant. And I'm like, uh, because I'm dressed really nicely because it's a date with a Japanese man in Japan. Um, oh my goodness. All right, fine. I'll should I turn you off. I'm going to turn this off. It's uh, the gas can is making noises at me. Um, and so like, we finish eating and he's just talking the whole time. Um, and like in his profile, he's like, I'm a financial analyst and blah, blah, blah. And it turns out that he's not a financial analyst. Like he does it part-time during tax season. He's like a part-time, he's like the guy that they hire for H and R block during tax season. That's, he only does it during that time. It's not his full-time job. Uh, and he didn't have a job here in Japan and it was just, it was a bad date. Like I have some standards. It, but it was just bad. It was terrible. So needless to say, I did not go on a second date with that man. Mm. And then I went on a date with a foreigner, an Australian. And we went out. We had a good time. We went to this really expensive Thai re Taiwanese restaurant. In the Takashimaya Gate Tower, which is like the really expensive department store in above Nagoya station. Really expensive place. Very nice. And the guy just proceeds to tear into me. Like, he's like, yeah, I can see why you probably have to date foreigners because you probably can't get a Japanese man. I'm like sitting there sipping my wine. And I'm just deadpan staring at him. As he continues to go on, he's like, yeah, I mean, I was wearing a dress, I was wearing a maxi dress, which for those of you, if you don't know, it's like, it's like a top and then it's a really long skirt that's attached to it. I'm wearing this really pretty maxi dress, it's like pinks and purples. He's like, yeah, you really shouldn't wear prints at your age. <laughs> and I was like, at my age, like I'm only 32. He's like, you shouldn't wear prints at your age. Japanese men won't like that. He's like, and you really need to dye your hair because your gray hairs are showing. And they are. They are showing. All of them. All of my gray hairs. I have a lot of gray hair on this side of my head. Usually I part my hair on this side, but today I just got out of the shower and it's all crazy. But you can see the silver, especially right here. There's a huge patch. And the guy's like, you should dye your hair because Japanese men won't find gray hair attractive. And he just kept going on and on and on and on. He he told me that my nails looked bad. Um, I had on like mauve, like a, a, a pale mauve purpley nail. Uh, and I was wearing flat shoes because I'd recently injured my foot. And he's like, you should be wearing heels. And this guy was just tearing into me the entire date about how it was obvious that I had to date foreigners because a Japanese man would never date me. And it's just like, it kept going on and on. And then like, he was really rude to the server. And when the guy brought the bill, he like put out an, an Amex black card. It's like, okay, I get it. You're rich. That's fine. Whatever. Mm. Terrible date. God, it was awful. Um, it was just, I, I, I just have, I have some great tender Japan stories. Uh, a lot of Japanese guys won't even show up to the date. Let's see. I think I've been stood up three times now. Uh, sorry, I'm going to get some more hot pot because I'm starving because I never ended up eating breakfast because I got distracted by the nabe and spent all my time buying this hot pot, um, and buying ingredients for it. 
and then deciding I was going to video myself cooking it. So um, anyways, yeah. So I think I've been stood up like three or four times now. It's like you make a date, you make an arrangement, you talk about the time, get on the train, head there, message the person, no answer. Message the person, no answer. Get there, message the person, no answer. And it's just absolutely ridiculous. I don't know what's up with Japanese men. Um, dated a guy for a couple of weeks. Uh, and then one night he was like, hey, by the way, do you mind if I see other guys? And I was like, do, do I mind if you see other men? Like, like you're bi? He's like, yeah. I was like, well, I, I don't mind that you're bi, but I do mind if you see other, if you see men while you're dating me. He's like, oh, okay, well, I have to break up with you then. <laughs> I can't, it really happened, guys. Uh, and I was like, okay, and then he just got his stuff and left. <laughs> and so, yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea, folks. No idea. I can just attract him. I have no idea. And yeah. And then let's see, I had been dating a guy for about, I don't know, November, December, August, September, October, November, December, for about five months. Really cute guy, really great Japanese. Um, he's a Japanese language teacher, so we spoke English and Japanese. And I was like, I'm an English teacher, you're a Japanese teacher, we're a great pair. Uh, awesome, nice car, really nice guy, very polite. We spent New Year's together, we went up to Gero, which is like an onsen hot spring town, had a great time. We walked through the cute little Doki Doki heart at the shrine for our first shrine visit. Uh, and then he fell off the map, like completely went ghost. And I was just like, like I messaged him. I was like, okay, yeah, the butt is coming. The butt was coming. Uh, and so like uh, three days, four days after New Year's, I messaged him. I was like, okay, uh, what time do you want to meet up on Saturday? And he's like, oh, I'll, I'll get back in touch with you. And like, Wednesday came, didn't hear from him. Thursday came, didn't hear from him. So I messaged him on Friday. I'm like, hey, so I'm, I'm trying to, you know, work out my schedule. What do you want to do on Saturday? Didn't hear from him. Didn't hear from him, didn't hear from him, didn't hear from him. I checked, tried calling him. I called him online, uh, Line, which is an app we use here in Japan. Because nobody pays for data or nobody pays for messaging here. Nothing. Uh, messaged him on Facebook. I was like, what the hell? And then like a week later, a friend of mine was like, hey, isn't this your boyfriend? And uh, that you said disappeared. And he had been posting on like a Japan a foreigners page on Facebook, like, you know, come to our school. We have open house for uh, Japanese language learners and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, message him and ask him. String of expletives, um, but something along the lines of, where the F have you been? Why the F haven't you been answering my messages? Are you F and dead? I thought you were dead in a gutter somewhere. Cause he drives a sports car and I thought maybe, and he drives like a maniac. So I thought maybe he'd had a car wreck or something. Um, and so, <laughs> and it turns out, and so he, he, uh, he messages me online and he's like, uh, by the way, I broke up with you because on, and it was weird because his English is so good, but his English in that message was horrific. It was like, because on the day of the new year, you insulted me greatly. It was like, I couldn't have written, you can't write soap operas like this nonsense. It was like the day of the new year, you insulted me greatly. And I was like, I'm like, try, I'm like replaying that day in my head, trying to think I'm like, I, I don't, like I was tearing the Mickey out of him because we were, um, on on New Year's Day at a lot of the temples, they'll let you ring the bell, which is really rare. And so like he had a, it's like a whole tree trunk. The, the, the thing that you ring the bell with is like this giant tree trunk suspended from ropes. Pull it back, bong. Uh, and he was having a hard time pulling it back, but I just pulled it back and was like, wow. Uh, and I was just, I was, I was giving him a hard time about it, but like playfully, you know? Uh, and that's the only thing I could possibly think of. <laughs> I know it sounds like a line out of a bad mafia movie on the day of the new year. You insulted my honor. Um, absolutely bonkers. 
Uh, and then he, so what, apparently he had just blocked me on everything. And I was like, I, I, what? Like, could we talk about this? Like, he's old, he was older than me too by a couple of years. I was like, why don't we just, why, why didn't you tell me that I hurt your feelings? Or why, why don't you just talk to me like about like a normal person would? No, nope, no normal person here. Uh, yeah. And so like after that, I was like, I'm done. I'm done. And so for like six months or so, like I didn't, I, I just deleted Tinder and deleted Bumble and wasn't doing anything, just working. I started taking private Japanese uh, language students. That's what I did. It was so like making, I was like, I'm not going to find a date. I'm just going to make money, uh, extra money on the side. Uh, but so because it's getting, not to sound like a terrible person, but it's getting close to the holidays. So I was like, I might had better start trying to find a boyfriend again. Because it's always sad to go through the holidays without someone to spend it with, especially because in Japan, Christmas is not like a religious holiday. It's a couple's holiday. So everything's all doki doki cutesy. Mm. Absolutely bonkers. I'm trying to think, what else? There was the guy that was like, surprise, I'm bi, and if you won't let me see other men, I'm going to break up with you. Um, the disappearing boyfriend, the guy that told me everything that was wrong with me, the guy that showed up dressed like a 1990s country music fan. Um, went on a date with a really nice guy, uh, <laughs> and it was just like, we got to the end of the date, and it was like, there's just nothing, there's just nothing. There was no, it was like zero feelings at all. He's like, he was like, so do you want to do this again? He's like, do you want to do it again? I was like, not really. I'm like, you're very good looking and interesting, but like, there's just, it was zero. It was like cardboard. There was no spark. But I have a date tomorrow. So we'll see if he shows up. I'll, 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 I'll do a little after the date video if the date happens. Uh, this is with a foreigner, so. Oh, no, that reminds me. I went on a date with a British guy. Uh, I don't know. His name spelling suggests that he is not a Western foreigner, but maybe a European foreigner. Uh, no, I went on a date with a British guy. Oh, my God, it was perfect. Six foot two-ish. Ginger, had a beard, really smart guy. We went out, we had a great time. Uh, bye. Uh, and, uh, and then like we were talking and talking and talking and then like the next weekend was coming up and I was like, all right, so you wanna meet up? And he's like, actually, I found someone I like better than you. <laughs> I kid you not, I think I still have the message. He's like, sorry, but actually I found someone I like better than you. And I was like, oh. What the hell? I just, I can't, I can't win for losing. <clears throat> ah, it's terrible. Anyway, so. So I have a date tomorrow with a foreigner. We'll see how that goes, if it goes, if it happens. Hmm. This stuff is really good. I'm telling you folks. It's just like you just throw everything in there and it cooks and you're done. Now I I've made like a lot of extra work for myself because I put everything in separate bowls so I could show it to you during the video, but hmm. Anybody want to talk about anything else? Not a lot to talk about in the Vic thing um, until we get through this appeals stuff. Uh, hmm. How about Lemonhead? Lemonhead's trying to subpoena Stan and Chris and Nick. Oh, Lord. Why? Why if the case is over? I just... Hello, Gabe. Uh, why, if the case is over, is he trying to subpoena all of these people? Like, <laughs> oh, thank you, Gil. 
Um, I, I am a good cook, actually. I, my family owns restaurants back in the States. I'm not going to tell you guys which. I wouldn't want to dox anybody. Uh, my poor what's left of my what's left of my family that's still living. There's not very many of them. That's why I moved here in the first place. But um, yeah, I, it, I'm a pretty good cook because I grew up in a kitchen. I grew up in restaurants cooking all the time. Uh, I don't know, Kurono, are you going to come to Japan? Um, I could do this. This is really easy. Uh, I made, oh, I don't, I should, I'll post this to Twitter later. I'll post this to Twitter later, but uh, I mean, you're going to have to send me some pics. I, you know, I got, I got to know what you look like in real life first, Corona. Not to be superficial, but, oh, how about this? No picks, but you have to buy all the ingredients and I'll cook the food. Also, you have to buy the beer. Girl's got to know her, her priorities. I'm not a girl. I'm a woman. Whatever. I'm just so confused about what words we're supposed to use to describe everybody anymore. Anyways. Yeah. So, uh, I can cook a lot of different things and it's fun. I love to cook, except in Japan, I can't cook in the summer because my, my kitchen, which is through that, that door, that door right there, uh, is actually, is that the right door? Yeah. Okay. Through that door, uh, has no air conditioning or heating in it. So in the summer it is miserable and I just don't cook in the summer. Uh, but in the winter, uh, I often set up in here under my little heated coffee table thing with my giant blanket that holds in all the heat and I stretch out and I cook things in a giant pot, apparently. Um, actually, that's not true. Usually I cook stuff in there and then I bring it in here and I'm watching Netflix or something. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> I, it's, I, I, so I've only been like partially following what's been going on since the case was uh, dismissed. And now they've appealed because I was in America and back and forth and I've been sick. Uh, but I'm slowly catching up on, on pod, uh, podcasts, Jim and I, on uh, YouTube videos and things like that. Mm. And it's just absolutely ridiculous. Lord have mercy. Uh, and to everybody out there, just remember, it's literally not over until it's actually over. Until all the other stuff is done, until everything is finished. So, you know, just settle in. This is like, what is it? How does Kiwi Farms describe it? We're in season two, season two. Uh, and you never know if the season is going to get renewed or not. So just keep watching until it does or doesn't get renewed. Vic is still going to conventions. He's still doing dub work for other companies that aren't. Automation and Roaster Teeth. I don't even like saying their names. And Faisal over there with his AWA this year. They didn't throw Stan out, so that's good. Uh, I thought that was going to happen. Stan said he was going to go because it was the 25th uh, birthday of AWA. and He was a founding member and blah, blah, blah. But um, uh, anyways, so apparently the AWA app crashed hardcore right in the middle of the convention. People couldn't find the times for anything and they had mostly done away with like the paper uh, schedule. So nobody knew what time anything was. Mm. Anyways. Uh, so yeah, so just, you know, if you were following for the big stuff, just simmer down. Uh, we're, we're in a season, a season like mid season break. So just, Find another series to watch. Uh, and just be calm. Be calm. Mm. It was so good. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go back and uh, talk a little bit. Some of you might have been here since the beginning, but... I've been listening to the Abroad in Japan podcast by a guy named Chris Broad. And um, he's awesome. Like, he's, I aspire to be as awesome as him. He came here with the JET program, was a teacher. Hmm. He was a teacher for about three years up in northern Japan. 
and um, and then he started to be a he was doing YouTube videos, and then he became a YouTuber. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll do more food stuff um, as we get into winter, and I'm actually able to use my kitchen and stuff. I'll film some more cooking. But um, yeah, and so like his pot his podcast is really good. Like I live in Japan, and so like I'm just. I have to stop listening. I've had to stop listening to it on the train because I was laughing so hard. Um, but the videos he makes are really great. And if you guys are interested in Japan, I, I would highly, highly recommend his YouTube channel abroad in Japan. Um, because it's so good. Like he, his production value is really high. He does all of it. Most of all of his own filming and editing. Uh, yeah, hold on. There's a giant clay pot between me and the computer, but <clears throat> one moment, please. It's abroad in Japan. I'm just going to put that here. Hold on. I'm going to knock stuff over. I've not even had half of that bottle of beer yet. Abroad in Japan. Just put that into the YouTube search thing. It's a big red logo. It says abroad in Japan in white. Um, and it's really good. Uh, yeah, I, I actually, I think I tagged him recently in a post, uh, three or four posts back where I was like, was listening to the abroad in Japan podcast and couldn't help but laugh about weird things. Japanese people say to foreigners that they would never say to a Japanese person. Like I was in, I was in a cafe eating lunch and a little old Japanese lady, like I had my headphones in. I was watching, I was actually watching one of his videos on my phone and I'm eating my food and the little lady next to me is like, I'm just like, take my earphone out. I'm like, hi. She's like, Anata no hana wa kirei ue no, ue no hana. And I'm like, your nose is pretty. Your nose goes up. <laughs> and, and, and she was, she was basically telling me I had a beautiful nose because, you know, most Japanese uh, noses are quite flat. They, they stick down. They point down. And I have a Western nose. It, it, cur it turns up. It, it turns it turns up. It's not down like this. It's up. Uh, but she felt the need to tap me on the shoulder while I was obviously eating and watching a video to tell me that my nose was beautiful. Uh, and then she proceeded to ask me where I live, where I was from, what my job was, where I worked, and if I was married. I always get asked, are you married? And I'm like, because I wear, um, on my right hand, I wear my university, my college ring. There you go. Um, and in Japan, they, they don't seem to know the difference between the right hand and the left hand wearing a ring on the ring finger. And so, like, all of my students are like, oh, sensei, dana-san wa dare, nihonjin desu ka, gakokujin desu ka. They're like, is your husband, who's your husband? Is he Japanese? Is he foreigner? And I'm like, I don't have a husband. They're like, then will you be wa? You're wearing a ring. And I'm like, Migi, this is my right hand. This is my left hand. When you're married, you wear your ring on your left hand, left finger. It's like they don't know that. In fact, when I go out, I, I actually take my university ring off because so many adult Japanese don't realize that the right hand, a ring on the right hand doesn't mean that you're married. <laughs> it's so frustrating. Uh, and they don't all wear wedding rings here. So some of them do. A lot of them do. But uh, not everyone wears a wedding ring. Floki, my dog, is standing just off camera. You probably saw him walk by, licking his lips like, mmm, I smell meat. But the joke is on him. This has been cooked in garlic, so he can't eat it. Mmm. So. I think it's about time that we turn the soup back on and cook the noodles because this is Japan is like, don't be wasteful. All right, we got fire. Hey, you can see that this camera. I have to say, um, when I had to do that interview 
the first interview I got asked for, I was like, oh no, all I have is my crappy built-in camera. So I like got on the internet and was Googling and I found this Logitech in Japan. It's called Logicool, Logitech um, webcam. And it's really good quality. It's also really wide. It's like my my uh, my my computer um, camera is like this is the frame. The Logitech you can see you can even see Floki's nose. Um, anyways, no Floki, we got noses. Your nose doesn't point up. Your nose points outwards. But anyways. So yeah, so I bought this camera and I'm like, wow, it's really great. And today it's not doing the weird thing where the color is all washed out. It must have had to do something to do the last time I used it with the background I was using. But um, anyway, so we're going to heat the soup back up. So we should put the lid back on. Yoink. We're going to bring the soup back up to a boil. And then we are going to dump in udon noodles because this is Japan and we don't waste anything, including super broth. So... Floki really wants some of this, but he can't have it because it was cooked with garlic. Mm. Mm, 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 cook nabe but I was like eh, I should film it I'm not gonna say that on camera Kurono because I think that might be trademarked it could be copyrighted I don't want to get any copyright strikes I only have three videos or five videos who knows mm. but if my date falls through tomorrow I'm gonna go to a temple and uh, there's a temple in Nagoya that I've been wanting to go to, but it's out in the sticks. So um, if my date falls through tomorrow, I will go there and video it. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so for some reason, YouTube won't let me film on my phone live. It's like, you do not meet our requirements for live broadcasting or something, live mobile broadcasting. And I don't know how to fix that. Do any of the viewers know? Anybody? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? You guys get that? Are you young? Do you even know that maybe? Anyways. <clears throat> and after this, I'm going to go party because I haven't had a day off that was like a day off day off, like an extra day off in forever. I mean, I did. I went to Disney World. Ah, uh, good, good. Then you understand the reference. I get that reference, or I understand that reference. Um, sorry, I can't. it's it's bubbling, but not like not a roiling bubble, boil, rolling boil, whatever. Um, yeah. So after actually, I finish this. This is my pregame, and to get enough food on my stomach that I don't get alcohol poisoning later. But I'm gonna go out. So. Uh, I always make bad decisions when I've been drinking and I'm out. So you guys will probably get lots of fun pictures on Twitter in a little bit. So Alcohol poisoning is not great. Corona, you are lying, sir. You're lying. Yes, you're, that's correct. Drinking is great. Alcohol poisoning is not great. Uh, so in Japan, I, I don't have one here. In Japan, they make these little tin bottles. I'm going to move my face out of the steam. Little tin bottles or aluminum bottles full of, um, it's like an anti-hangover drink. It's called ukon. ukon. Uh, and it's usually got a picture of a liver and ginger on the front of it. And it's this bright, toxic orange it's turmeric like it, it's turmeric orange that's the only way to describe it and it's this drink that you're supposed to drink before you go out drinking and it like coats your stomach and slows the absorption of the alcohol or prevents it from going into your bloodstream and it just goes straight through i don't know what it's supposed to do can't read the kanji on the back but usually if i'm going to go out and go on a bit of a drinking binda uh, which is few and far between since i've started since i've since I've gotten older, don't go bender drinking anymore. Floki, 
Plucky is Plucky's hiding off frame right there. Here, I'm gonna let's see. There he is. <laughs> Half of his face over there. It's called Ukon. U K O N. Ukon. Not Unko like poop, but Ukon. Yeah, Ukon. Mm. Comes in a little coppery colored bottle. There's a Ukon Women's that's in this bright pink bottle. All right, I think we're uh, I think we're cooking with heat. Yeah. All right. Woohoo! This is ah chat ah ah. I didn't plan well. <laughs> I didn't plan this well enough. All right, now for our final act, we are going to open the udon noodles and drop them, not burn ourselves, and we're not going to splash this boiling hot liquid. We're not. We're not going to do it. We're going to slowly, slowly drop the noodles into the soup. All right, and then we're going to turn the heat down so that we don't turn. Uh oh, I didn't turn the heat down. I turned the heat off. Oh, well, these noodles take almost nothing to cook. Uh, so we're just going to stir them. Yeah. I can't read that first kanji, Kudono. If you're going to message me, message me in hiragana or katakana, please. I only know about 200 kanji. And that. Na. Abunai. Yes, Abunai. Okay, dangerous. Yes, Abunai. Abunai death height. That's your Japanese word of the day. Abunai. Abunai means dangerous. The adjective. Uh, but Japanese people yell it all the time. Uh, in fact, last night while I was walking the dog, some junior high school boys were on their bicycles riding, and one of them got too close to me, and he went Abunai to himself. Like they say it to themselves when they themselves are doing something dangerous. Uh, it's so funny. Sorry. I gotta heat this up a little bit more. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Japanese high school and junior high school boys are the worst. When they're out in the wild, when they're in the classroom, they're more or less deal you can deal with them, but when they're out in the wild, they can be really annoying. There's a pack of them. Oh no, the beer is empty. What are we gonna do? Loki is very confused. Uh, even the beer is getting into the... Can you see that? It says Tokyo 2020 Olympics official partner. <laughs> so funny. Um, anyways, yeah. So, like, out in the wild, Japanese high school and junior high school boys are very annoying. Um, because, like, they're like, oh, nothing's going to happen to us. No one's going to report us. They're wrong. Uh, so their uniforms are all, they all look the same, but they are all distinct. They usually have the kanji for their school embroidered on them or they're on the buttons or something like that. And there's a pack of them that go to the park over near where I walk my dog. And they, they, they drink alcohol, you know, things that high school boys do. Drink alcohol and have sex in the park with high school girls. Having sex in the park is a huge thing here. Because, like, you can't take your girlfriend back to your parents' house. Um, oh, Lord. It's a mess. Yeah. Yeah. I've even seen grown people doing it. Uh, walk by, and it's like a girl in a short skirt sitting on a guy's lap. And, oh, oh. It's terrible. Mm. Uh, but, yeah. It's crazy. I don't know if it's like the voyeuristic thing or it's just like they can't spring for the 4,000 yen for a love hotel. Like, seriously, get a love hotel. They're so cheap. Oh, now, if you really get, you guys really want to see some crazy stuff. I know I keep talking. I swear to God, this video is not sponsored by Abroad in Japan, but I just love him so much. Like, his video content is so good. And for me, especially because I live, okay, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't noodle. Oh my God, there we go. Uh, his content is just so relatable for me because I live here. Um, it's like the 4D experience. Like he blogs about, he, he video blogs about all the things I experience on a regular basis. Um, so anyways, uh, one day I want to be as good of a YouTuber as Chris Brob. He's awesome. Like he really actually like, 
he doesn't do like what I'm doing. Like I'm sitting here in front of the camera talking to you live. Like he thinks about shots and framing and he records things and then he edits them. And I just, I don't know anything about editing video and I don't have, I mean, I guess I have my iPhone 11, which has a 4k video or on it. So I guess I could use that, but. That is some good noodles. Holy moly, this is good. I can't get the garlic. Okay, I'm gonna have to take a picture of this sauce and remember it because it is amazing. And it goes really well with pork and vegetables. And I think I'm gonna throw some tofu in here. I got some more tofu left over. We're gonna put some tofu. <laughs> I'm gonna eat all this and then not wanna go out. But I swear to God, I have not been out in forever. And I'm going out to a bar and someone's gonna buy me a drink. Heavens knows I deserve it. I don't care if I have to go to the Gaijin bar in Nagoya. It's a, as it's only 4:35 in the afternoon. My sleep schedule is still so screwed up from the being in America. Like I keep waking up at like 3:30 in the morning and I roll over and I kind of I look at my my windows face east. And so I roll over on my bed and I look up at the window and if I can't see any light outside, I just roll back over and refuse to get up. Uh, and I don't care if I have to lay there awake until sunlight starts coming in that window, but I'm not getting up. Sorry, I'm shaking. Oh, jishin garamari masuko chui kudasai. Sorry. That's what the alarm says. If there's ever a six plus or higher earthquake, our, all of our phones start screaming at us and they go, jishin garamari masuko chui kudasai, which is there is an earthquake coming, be careful. Um, but I, the the webcam is precariously perched on the top of my uh, my laptop. Uh oh, we lost a we lost a viewer. They didn't like my earthquake joke. Ah. Internet internet fame is such a fickle thing. Sorry, I'm gonna heat this back up and cook this. The actually, it's probably hot enough to cook the tofu, but I want to cook the tofu faster because I want to go and get dressed and go out. And get a beer. Actually, so fun fact, this is a national holiday, but not everybody gets it off. But it's a national holiday today. And Monday is my normal day off anyway. It's Monday in Japan, by the way. It's 4.37 p.m. on a Monday. So, like, the bars won't even be open for another two hours. But that's neither here nor there. Um, anyway, so uh, a lot of workers only work, like, Tuesday through Friday. Like, especially office workers. Monday is a day off. So in Japan, Mondays can be as lit at the bar as a Friday. It's pretty funny. You guys, you got to come to Japan. And you have to come to Central Japan. That's one thing I have criticism. I have criticism about you, Chris Broad. Um, I'm sorry, it's what I'm on right now. It's either Star Wars or I'm going to talk to you about Chris Broad. Those are your only two options. Um, he never does any, he did a video about Toyama or Takayama, but like he never does anything too much in central Japan. Like, I don't think he's ever been to Nagoya. You should come to Nagoya, Chris Broad, and do a video about Tebasaki and Akamiso. If you guys are watching this, you need to go over to his page and be like, this one YouTuber who has 27 followers is upset with you and says that you should do videos on central Japan. He passed us by. He went to Osaka and Kyoto and Hikone, but he didn't stop in Nagoya. So sad. Oh, you guys all just saw me knock my chopsticks off. Oops. All right. We're going in for more noodles. Let's see if I can do this. They're going to... Unfortunately, now they're going to start cooking into mush. That's why you use, oh, so fun fact, Erica, why do you use udon noodles in your uh, hot pot? Well, internet, we use udon noodles in our hot pot because they have a much higher tolerance to heat than ramen or uh, uh, any of the other noodle types. So 
You can cook them in the hot soup for a long time before they literally disintegrate into mush. Ah! I swear I'm good at chopsticks, guys. Kyotsukete. Hi, okay, that's it. I will kyotsukete. Is that what that is? Kyotsukete? No, that's the wrong O, isn't it? That's a whoa. That's the whoa O. I don't know, Kuruno. Ah, my nose is running. Bugger. Also, also, Chris Broad, because of your podcast, I now want to, when anyone does something stupid, I want to call them a Muppet. Apparently, British people. Hello, Twiz Pittman. It is going awesome. Uh, I am drinking beer. Sapuro. Ooh, in the steam. Ah. Uh, and I am cooking. We are at the tail end of my hot pot cooking demonstration. Uh, we have this video will be up. I will upload it. Um, it will it will go up after the live streaming. Uh, and you can listen in to such fascinating tales as all of the bad Tinder dates I've had or how a random old lady at the cafe would not leave me alone while I was just trying to eat my food and just kept going on and on about how my nose was cute because it turned upwards. Uh, or how uh, I'm currently a little bit obsessed with the Abroad in Japan YouTube slash podcast. Um, yeah, so uh, we are at the end of the hot pot, which is why we have dumped noodles in. Uh, I have some leftover tofu, so I also dump that in. The vegetables will keep, uh, and I will probably have hot pot for dinner tomorrow night, too. I have a date tomorrow. Yeah, I just got the freaking notification. I love Japan. I want to hear all that. Okay, Twiz Pittman. <clears throat> I only make videos for my apartment, but I will direct you to an amazing YouTuber and podcaster named Chris Broad. His YouTube and podcast are called Abroad in Japan. And I will put, I'm going to not knock over my hot soup and I'm going to not knock over my beer because the computer is right here. You can't see magic hands. It's called Abroad in Japan. There you go. That's the name of the channel. And he's amazing. He's a British guy, lives in northern Japan. Great production value. Amazingly interesting. He's very charismatic on the camera. He's very hard on himself, but he's really great. Uh, and on the podcast, his co-host is a guy named Pete Donaldson, who is a radio DJ in London. Great guy. Uh, obsessed with Coolish and football. Football, and by football, I mean soccer, in case you're American. Um, but yeah, um, in my videos, you're just going to get me mostly sitting in my apartment eating food or cooking food and... Thank you. Uh, tell him I sent you. Maybe maybe one day we can do a joint uh, joint video together. Chris Brown. Uh, anyways, he's younger than I am. He's amazing. Um, and but he does stuff. Hmm. Any suggestions for learning Japanese? So um, surprisingly enough, Duolingo, Lingo? Duolingo is an, actually a pretty good app. But for speaking Japanese, the only practice, see, that's my problem, right? So I spend, I spend five days a week, eight plus hours a day only speaking English because that's what I teach. I'm going to take my hands off the table so we stop getting the earthquake slash Cloverfield slash Blair Witch Project effect. Mm. I'm going to put my hands down so I stop shaking the table. Um, so the problem with speaking practice for Japanese is that unless you have someone to talk with, it's really difficult. Um, I learn, I, I mean, I, I, spend, I spend eight hours a day speaking English, and so my Japanese suffers terribly. Um, I try to make up for it by silly stuff. Like, for example, anywhere I go, I attempt to read every sign I look at. <laughs> Um, if I can't read the kanji, some of the kanji, then I skip over them. I'm like, kanji, kanji, something, something, something. Um, or when I'm at the station, if I hear the train PA system saying something, I repeat it. Um, when I'm at the grocery store, I try to make a point of asking, even if I know where something is, I try, try to make a point of asking the clerk where something is just to get the practice in it because it's really annoying being an English teacher in Japan, 
because you only speak English all the time. And when you live here, a lot of times people like I'll go to the store, right? I'll go to a, a takeout restaurant and they will ask me something and I'll say, ah, no, one more time, please. And then they try to say it to me in English. And I know that I I know I know that they are trying to be helpful, and that is omotenashi. It's the Japanese hospitality thing, um, and it's great. But it frustrates me to no end because I just want to hear what they said one more time because I couldn't catch what they said. Um, so yeah, uh, I have been to a bajillion festivals. I in the summer I live in my yukata. I love kimono. I love to wear yukata. So during summer, I'm like. I keep at any time when it's like, it's like June, I start asking my Japanese students. I'm like, so is it okay to start wearing yukata yet? Because I don't know the actual start season start for yukata wearing. Uh, but yeah, I love to go to festivals. I go to festivals all the time. Um, I have been to a ton of Tanabata festivals, which is star festival. I have been to, um, there are no pictures of this for you guys because it's before I had to have an internet presence, but uh, before the lawsuit happened, but I have been to the famous um, <clears throat> fertility festival. I'm not sure. Well, I don't guess it doesn't matter. I'm not monetized. So I can say penis. Uh, I've been to the penis festival, uh, which is insane. By the way, there are people that just run along with, bottles of sake and they're like have some sake have some sake yeah yeah uh and and they just give you free sake there are girls uh in in like clothing traditional clothing and there's like a big cask and they're just dipping the sake out with a ladle like sake for you and sake for you and sake for you um i have been to a festival in my local area which is amazing and it's in central japan and people should come to it. And it's called Hadaka Matsuri. Um, it's, there are different Hadaka Matsuris all over Japan. Uh, but the one in Konomiya, Konomiya, Japan, which is here in central Japan between uh, Gifu and Nagoya, um, still uses a real live uh, lucky man. So uh, the premise of the festival, it happens in February, freezing cold. And men who are 42, uh, the word for four is she, the word for two is ni, shini, shini, which means death. Uh, men who are 42 years old are considered to have bad luck. And so um, there is this traditional festival called Hadaka Matsuri where they nominate one person. Actually, now it's drawn by lottery, uh, but there's one man who is, who is chosen. And his job is to take away all of the bad luck of all of the 42-year-old men in the area. And it's supposed to be like the local area, but men come from all over. And there are different, this festival happens all over Japan. Um, <laughs> but so um, so the, the man who's chosen to be the Shinotoko, the lucky man, he has to shave all the hair off of his body. I think they let him keep his eyebrows. Uh, I don't know about anything below the waist because honestly I, you can't get close enough during the actual festival to find out but I think I've heard that the he has to shave like his legs and his arms and his head and he goes all bald <clears throat> but so he spends the night before in prayer and fasting and in the day of the festival no and the day of the festival um men who are 42 from all over the local area, they're, the local shrines, they carry these bamboo uh, bundles. They're very colorfully decorated. And there's always feet sticking out of the bottom. It's really funny. Um, and they carry them from all over. And some of them come from like really long distances. Some of them start like the day before and they carry them on foot all the way to the shrine, Konomiya Jinja, Konomiya Shrine. Um, and as they go, they have these colored strips of cloth called called Naui. Naui? Naui. I'm pretty sure it's Naui. Uh, and people along the way, they they ask, they were like, please give me uh, a colored piece. And they're supposed to rip it off and hand it to you. 
Um, and those little strips are good luck because it's like you're helping to take away the bad energy and those little strips of colored strips are lucky. Um, and so, and then like, as the men go through, there's lots of sake involved and it's really frustrating because it happens on like a Tuesday or a Thursday. It happens like during a weekday. And this year it just so happened that it fell on a day I had off. I think it was a Monday. Uh, cause it's on the same date every year, not the same day. Uh, and so these men, oh, I forgot the most important part. They're naked, except for a, like a traditional Japanese loincloth. Uh, <laughs> and it's February, so it's absolutely freezing, which is why they drink so much sake, I think, to keep warm and not pay attention to the fact that they're literally only wearing, I'm sorry about the shaking, it's the table. Um, they're literally only wearing like tabi, which are the Japanese split-toed socks. And they make a version of tabi that have a hard rubber sole. So they're wearing those and a loincloth and colored strips of fabric and nothing else. And they've been carrying these bundles of bamboo through however many kilometers, uh, you know, upwards of 30 kilometers. And, uh, and so <clears throat> the bystanders on the side, a lot of people just, they just, ah, oh, they reach out. They're like, please, you know, give me, give me. They try to touch them. But first of all, I get, I got very intoxicated this last time. Actually, there might be video of it up on my YouTube channel. I'm not sure. Um, I got very intoxicated uh, when I went this year and I was like watching. I'm like, how do you, how do you get these colored strips? There seems to be, there seems to be some sort of method. There has to be a method. So as I was drinking my beer and watching, I noticed that a lot of the women were like, the older women, especially the older ladies, were like, Oni san, chodai, chodai, uh, which means like older brother, give it to me, give it to me. Um, in like these really high pitched voices that belie their age. And so I was like, uh huh, that's the method. You have to scream, you know, older brother, please give that to me. And so, first of all, I'm, I'm quite tall. I'm not that tall for a woman, but in Japan, I'm quite tall. So I'm about, I'm average height of like a Japanese guy here. I'm like five, seven, five, eight. I'm not sure anymore. I've forgotten. Uh, I haven't had to measure my height since college for my <laughs> graduation gown. Uh, but I think I'm like 173 centimeters or something. And so, and I'm in like a beautiful bright blue. I had my, my favorite scarf on like this obnoxiously bright blue scarf and hat. And I was just, I would get like right up to the front and I'm really tall and I go, Oni san chodai, ni san chodai, just at the top of my lungs in as high of a pitch voice as I could make. And like they'd look over and then they'd look at me and you could just, I wish I could have recorded it because like their eyes go, what? As they look, because I have blue eyes, which is extremely rare to see even in Japan among foreigners. And they just get really like wide eyed and they'd like tap the people beside them on the shoulder and they'd all run over and they'd give me little strips. I have a, there's a picture of me somewhere probably on Instagram uh, where I'm just covered from like, from like here to here in brightly covered colored strips of cloth. And I have my, uh, my strips around here somewhere. You're supposed to keep them. And if the year was bad, then you're supposed to take them to the shrine at the end of the year and burn them. Um, <laughs> And uh, oh well, thank you so much. I I, I would love to I, I love to talk to people. Uh, my favorite hobby is talking. I talk for a living, literally. So um, anybody who just wants to talk is welcome to join and ask questions, and I will talk to you guys anytime I can. Um, and I think I'm going to be on a video eventually with Toy Bounty Hunters again. Um, they asked me to do another uh, interview with them, but then they had to go out of town unexpectedly. So eventually another video will come out. And uh, at one point I was supposed to do another video with Hero. Um, and then he got busy and then I went to America and it just didn't work out. So maybe I'll, I'll get back in touch with him. Uh, and I think Tug wanted to do a video too, but I don't remember. That's been a while ago. But anyways, I am always open to talking to literally anybody that wants to talk to me. I don't have a lot to do other than work and show you guys cooking videos.
Uh, I will come on and talk to just about anyone. Uh, we'll have to talk behind the scenes. Uh, you can DM me on Twitter or I don't know. I don't think you can DM me on uh, YouTube. But if you DM me on Twitter at, at Sifa Sigurd, which is S-I-F-F-A-S-I-G-U-R-D as in Delta. Um, and we'll talk about it beforehand. Like just, you know, there are a few things I can't talk about <clears throat> because of the court thing that's going on with Vic. But or that I won't. I won't talk about out of courtesy, but uh, give me just a second. I'm going to eat some of these noodles because I've been running my mouth and not eating my noodles that I cooked. So one moment, please, while I slurp some noodles. Mm. So good. Holy crap. Um, I mean, I'd be screwed if I ever became a vampire. I love garlic so much. Like, you could just give me garlic and be like, here, your meal is garlic. And I'd be like, yes, garlic, it's delicious. Oh, Kisebeck. Oh, man, Kisebeck. Uh, I had a insanely good time at Disney World. Uh, now, my time at Disney World was amazing but mostly because I had an unlimited budget. Um, I, I went into my Disney world trip. I've always had to scrimp and save. And I, I've always been poor most of my life. Uh, and so like, I've always had to just like penny pinch and use coupons. And when I was in college, when I was in college, I joined an honor society just so that I would have access to free food because like you'd always have to work these public service projects and there would always be catering. And then at the end of the catering, you could take everything home when the event was over. So like I, I lived off of like noodles and soup and leftover cake and pizza from, um, from honor society events in college. I was, I was really poor growing up. Um, and so uh, this time that I went to Disney world, I was really lucky to just have, um, a very expansive budget. And so I went bonkers. Um, uh, and I just, I, I really enjoyed it amazingly. And I think the, the not having to worry about like the cost of anything made it that much better for me because it was like, there were these special edition, um, Leia bun head in Mickey Mouse ears that came out. And I was like, I saw that they were coming out and they were going to be out. They were going to like debut the week or so that I was there. And I'm like, I have to have those. And it was like, it was just, I just went, went in and I bought them. And it was amazing. Except for the fact that they were terribly engineered. Oh, I have a bone to pick with Disney. And who made those? Head oh, her universe? Her universe. I'm angry at her universe, but I'm really angry about them, about those stupid Leia bun ears. I love those ears so much, except they have a one ridiculous flaw. There's a metal piece that's made to look like the metal that's on her belt, and the point points down, and it sits lower than the headband. And so when you're wearing these beautiful $80 headband Mickey Mouse ears, there's a giant metal piece poking into the top of your head. Oh, they're so great, except for that, like, it couldn't, I wore them, I wore them when I went to the castle to have dinner with the princesses, because I was wearing my Leia, um, her Cloud City dress um, from her universe, and I loved it, and except for the fact that the headband was poorly designed, because that little metal piece stabs down into the top of your head. And so like, I thought maybe it was just the pair that I got. I'm like, maybe this one, the glue or the sewing was wrong. So like I went to another shop that had them and I was like, um, I told them what was going on. I'm like, can I, could I see your pair? Lo and behold, they're all made that way. So you can have your adorable Leia Mickey Mouse bun ears, um, but you're gonna have a piece of metal stabbing you in the top of your head the whole time. It's so frustrating, but they're beautiful and they looked great with my outfit. Um, but yes, uh, the, the the short stick of that story is I had an amazing time at Disney World, but I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that my budget was unlimited. Uh, Twiz, yeah, definitely anything. Anyone ever wants to ask me about Japan, I am more than happy to answer it. You guys can send me questions over on uh, Twitter. Um, 
Beauty is not, no, no, it was awful. It was terrible. Like, uh, it was very uncomfortable. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Pardon my slurping, but that's how we eat them here. Also, it's like the only way you can eat these noodles. Like, I mean, I guess I could like shovel them into my mouth. Let's, let's see. Let's see if I can eat these noodles without slurping them. Hold on. <clears throat> Ahem. Try it. Test try one, eating the noodles without slurping. Go. Mm -mm. Mm. <laughs> it's not like spaghetti. They're like, they're like, they're so thick that you can't just like shovel them with the chopstick. Like you have to literally bite them and chew them up before you can get more of them into your mouth because they're so thick. Mm. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I'm such a nerd. Like I love hot pot because, um, uh, oh, Rurouni Kenshin. In Rurouni Kenshin, like their, their, their treat meal was that they would go to the hot pot restaurant uh, and I remember I just always wanted to eat hot pot growing up. Like, I watched Furuni Kenshin a lot. I love Furuni Kenshin. I'm a huge Japanese history fan. Ah. Fun, fun, airy, mean fact. I'm a massive Japanese history nerd. Um, I love Japanese history. In fact, my students regularly ask me, why on earth do I know so much about Japanese history? Um, I, okay, so uh, let's... <laughs> I preface this by saying I haven't been into anime since like what was the last thing I really watched okay I watched Attack on Titan the first season but only only because um I was Bryce Pappenbrook handler uh the day he found out he got the role in Attack on Titan like I was driving him from the airport to a convention and he got a phone call and he hung up the phone he looked over at me and he was like I gotta tell you something and I'm not supposed to tell anybody and I was like well if you're not supposed to tell anybody you probably shouldn't tell me he's like if I tell you will you promise not to tell anybody and I'm like well I feel like of all the things I've ever seen happen with anime voice actors, I suppose you're, I mean, in the scheme of things, you telling me something's not going to be the most ridiculous thing I've ever had to agree not to tell anyone. So he was like, I just got the role of Aaron Yeager in Attack on Titan. And I was like deadpan looking at him like, I don't know what any of those words mean. He was like, when we get back to the hotel, I'm going to make you watch the first couple episodes in Japanese. And I was like, okay. So like driven back from the airport, we got to the hotel, we checked in, dragged me into his hotel room, pulled out his laptop, and we watched like the first three episodes um, of Attack on Titan in Japanese. And I was like, yeah, well, this is different. This is very berserk. It reminded me of berserk at the, the, the old berserk, not the weird CG one that's out right now. But, uh, and so like, I think that might've been the last real anime I watched. Um, I watched Yuri on Ice, uh, but I'm a sucker for ice skating, so. That was also, uh, all of them found out, like a lot of them found out that they got their roles that weekend. So like, um, tater, tater Tot, Tater Tot, Tater Tot, what's Tater Tot's real name? I, oh, Tatum, J. Michael Tatum. Uh, he also, I guess, I don't know if he was directing it or he was voicing a minor a character, not a minor character, voicing character, I don't remember, but he also knew about it. And so like, they weren't supposed to tell each other but there was like this ongoing like joke the entire weekend. Like Tatum would be like, man, that's really an attack on my hamburger or something. You're really attacking that hamburger. Like every time he could fit in a joke about attacking something, that's a Titan size ice cream you're eating there, Bryce. Um, it was just this whole, and I'm just, it was, it was, it was really funny. Needless to say, a good time was had by all long before all the drama, before, Pepperidge Farm remembers before all the anime drama started. Hmm. But yeah, I'm a huge, huge Japanese history fan. Uh, so yeah, a lot of my Japanese, a lot of my students are just like, why do you know that? And I'm like, I minored in Japanese when I was in college. I did, I, I, my, my college's Japanese course was insanely erratic. It was like, 
it was Japanese language, Japanese kanji, but it was also Japanese, uh, Japanese culture through anime, Japanese culture through theater, Japanese culture through movies, Japanese history, Southeast Asian history and its interaction with Japan. Uh, I just, I had to take all these really random classes. Um, <laughs> and I won't forget, I had to do, I had to do a, a, a presentation about anime in a class. <laughs> Living the dream, right? I had to do a, a presentation about anime in the class. And it was right when the, is it Mike Tyson? It's like the, yo dog, I heard you like something. So here's some something, something on your something meme came out. And um, so I, <laughs> the start of that presentation was like, yo dog, you like Gundam. So here's some Gundams on a Gundam on a Gundam for you. And it was like, it was like the RX Gundam. And then on top of that was like a winged Gundam and attached to the top of that was um, one of the Gundam seed Gundams. And it was just like the giant totem pole of Gundams. Um, I, I, I didn't even, it, I felt like it was cheating to take those classes. So guess Gundamception uh, because I, I had been working for anime, con well, <clears throat> volunteering. I'm not going to say working because they didn't pay me, but I was volunteering for anime conventions for so long by the time I had taken those classes that I was just like, I feel like this is unfair. I feel like it's unfair for me to be taking these classes. It's like it's like when you're in high school and your school only has one language and it's either foreign language and your foreign language is Spanish and then like there are four people from a Spanish speaking country in your class and you're like, I feel like this is unfair. But uh, yeah, college was wild. And by wild, I just mean like the classes were ridiculous that I had to take for my Japanese minor or Japanese culture minor. Hmm. All right. I am stuffed and it's only five o'clock here. Good Lord. So we don't have, um, we don't have daylight savings time in Japan. So it's been dark since like 430. It's bonkers. I'm going to lean back against my couch now. Uh, you guys can see my scrap. My hair is all crazy. Oh, my all-time favorite food here. Oh, easy. Miso cats. Uh, Central Japan is famous for red miso, akamiso. Uh, I'll get to you just one second, Kisebek. Um, the food here that is... Central Japan is known for two major famous foods. Tebasaki, which is chicken wings, but like not like we know them. They're like they're like real chicken wings, and it's the wing with the little flappy bit attached. And like there's a special way you're supposed to eat them. Like you stick the entire chicken wing into your mouth, and then like you, you put your teeth on top of the flat, and you pull all of the meat out in one go. Like that's how you're supposed to eat them. Um, and then akamiso cats, which is red miso breaded fried pork cutlet. Um, I love miso cats so much and I get upset when I go to other parts of Japan and there's no miso cats. Uh, I forget sometimes and I'll go somewhere and I'll be like, I'll have miso cats. And they're like, there's no miso cats here. And I'm like, no, like Vader, all episode three, bad dubbing. No. Uh, anyways, miso cats. The answer to your question is miso cats. Twiz. Kisa back. Um, well, Unbroken was amazing and relatively flat factual. Um, it's the story of the Olympic runner who was drafted into World War II and then captured by the Japanese and forced to work in a Japanese prison camp. Um, that story is relatively factual. Um, as far as Last Samurai goes, it's very dramatized, but it is based on a real story. Uh, 49 Ronin, and I'm pretty sure you meant to write 47, not 49. <laughs> the Keanu Reeves 47 Ronin movie is so far from being correct. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's like CG and there's a witch. and No. Um, if you want to see a more factual representation of the story of the 47 Ronin, you should watch Akira Kurosawa's 47 Ronin. Yeah, Unbroken is amazing. It's a really good movie. Uh, it's a tearjerker, and it's hard to watch. Um, for me, I, I'm. <clears throat> it's really frustrating because, like, I can watch war movies. And I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. Um, but when I see things that are based in history, especially history, 
um, they affect me a lot more. So like Unbroken was hard for me to watch. Like it, it hurt. It was just painful. Um, and so like I, I, I'm, I'm easily emotionally moved by stories that are based in historical fact. Um, oh, uh, uh, hold on. I, the Japanese name of the movie is Silence. Hold on. But it's not like what you guys are thinking, probably the movies with the monsters. Um, it's about the Jesuit priests in Japan. Uh, movie Jesuit Japan. Thank you, Google. Google says, oh, apparently it is called Silence. Um, it's with Andrew Garfield and Adam Driver and Liam Neeson. And it's a story about um, the Jesuit priests' attempts to bring their version of Christianity into Japan and the persecution uh, that occurred. Um, more or less factual um and it actually showed in japan which surprised me i didn't think that they would show that here but they did so i would suggest that movie silence is called silence just look for the one with adam driver in it and no he's not a main character so if you don't like his acting you don't have to worry about it um my area i have not encountered any weird vending machines twiz um this is central Japan and central Japan is the most conservative part of all of Japan, all of the Japanese islands, everything. Um, we have the strongest like uh, imperial political party presence here. Um, if you go outside of Nagoya station on a weekend, you will often run into the people who are screaming, throw out the foreigners, revere the emperor, uh, something like Tino Joey or something like that. Um, and they believe that all foreigners should be thrown out of Japan and Japan should uh, disregard the wartime constitution that was put in place after World War II. Um, and J central Japan is extremely conservative slash leaning towards imperial. So I don't know if that's right or left. I have no idea. I'm, I don't follow Japanese politics because I, even if I were to become a Japanese citizen, I couldn't vote. I can't vote. I can't. If I get permanent residency, I can't vote. Maybe if I become a Japanese citizen, I can vote. Uh, but that is a long and paper intensive process. But if I get permanent residency, I still can't vote. Uh, so I don't much follow it other and except for the outcomes because it doesn't do me any good. I can't vote. So mm. there is, uh, I'm trying to think. Ah, okay. So you're interested in the Bakamats uh, and the Meiji era, which followed the Bakamats. Uh, that is my favorite era as well. Uh, I could talk to you about the Shinsengumi all day. I happen to know a great deal. And I have been to Mibu uh, in Kyoto, which is where their old headquarters have were. Um, I have not been to the headquarters in Tokyo where they have a giant Shinsengumi festival every year. Haven't been there yet. Just no time. I don't have time off. I work so much. <laughs> I don't work as much as Japanese people do, but Lord, I work so much. Uh, but Twiz, um, uh, the... Japanese, yeah, my Japanese students are like, why do you know the Shinsengumi? And I don't want to be like, <laughs> because I really love Kenshin and uh, Saito is my favorite character. People always ask me when I tell them, oh, I really love learning about the Shinsengumi. They're like, who's your favorite captain? And I'm like, Sanbangumi Taicho Hajime Saito or Saito Hajime. And they're like, they're like, why, why do you know? Why do you know that? Why, why? And I'm just like, I don't want to tell them because, like, I love Ken, Rurouni Kenshin so much, and that was my favorite character from that series. Uh, he's also my favorite character in the um, Shinsengumi Hakuoki series, uh, or and Kuragani Peacemaker. Like, I'm I'm a huge fan of any of those anime that are from around the Bakamatsu time. So, uh, yeah. So, um, if you ever come to Japan, you should go to Kyoto and go to Mibu. Uh, Mibu Dera, which is Mibu Temple, and next to it is the old Shinsengumi headquarters, and it's amazing because uh, I am, I mean, Okita Soji, commander of the first squadron of the Shinsengumi. Is that your, the friend you're talking about? Twiz, Okita Soji, Soji Okita. 
not to be confused with the character who they also Sojiro uh, from the Kenshin series, who they they borrowed that name to make that character, and the sword style. I think they also borrowed that sort of Tenken Ryu Heavenly Sword style. Uh, I don't know. We need to get Hero Hey. Where's Hero Hey? He knows. He's also big into this stuff. Actually, what time is it on the West Coast in America? I don't know. I have no idea. I'm terrible at time zones. Uh, but if you go to Mibu in Kyoto, uh, there you have to make a reservation ahead of time. But the old headquarters is there. And if they only do the tour in Japanese, but if you can find someone, you need to find someone to translate for you because the story is amazing. Um, you can walk through the house uh, or the building and they they the only thing that they have changed in the building is that they painted one of the walls. Your, uh, the co-leaders, the co-leaders, Hijikata and uh, the less famous one. <laughs> uh, Hijikata and Hijikata to Hijikata to Hey Siri! Who were the co-leaders of the Shinsengumi? Okay, I found this on the web for who were the co-leaders of the Shinsengumi. I just want Check you guys to know that Siri was able to translate the word Shinsengumi perfectly. Uh, to. Ah, Kondo Isami. So, God, I can't believe I forgot his name. Yeah, Hijikata and Kondo Isami. Uh, yep, yeah, you got me. Keep it back. Um, <laughs> I love Siri. I, I, I used to have, uh, I used to have Google. I was like, hey, Google. Uh, but now that I've gotten an iPhone, I'm like, hey, there, hey. I love Siri. She helps me. I wake up in the morning. I'm like, Siri, what's the temperature outside? And she's like, it's 10 degrees. And I'm like, fuck that noise. Um, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, Kondo Isami and Hijikata Toshizo. Uh, and there was actually a third one, but they murdered him or he died or he, uh, betrayed them. Serizawa. Ah, Serizawa. My ex-boyfriend who disappeared, his family name was Serizawa. And I was like, oh, are you related to uh, Serizawa Kamo from the Shin Tsugumi? And he was like, huh? I was like, all right, you're boring. Uh, anyways, but yes. Uh, Hijikata is super famous because he was just really good looking. He was a really good looking guy. <laughs> Oda Nobunaga, yeah. Uh, Hijikata is, um, so, ooh, if you come to Japan and you want to do like a, I'm going to go to famous Shinsengumi places, uh, Ikedaya, the famous Ikedaya affair, you can still go to the place where that was, Mibudera and Mibu in Kyoto, and then uh, the name I can't remember, the place right outside of Tokyo, but little known, if you go to Hokkaido, the northernmost island, there is a star-shaped fort there. It's called Fort Goryokaku, and it was the last stand of the Shinsengumi. Hijikata, uh, when they were defeated by the Sh Bakufu, he fled by boat up the coast to Hokkaido and took refuge in the fort, and that's where their last battle happened. And there's a huge bust of him there, and there's lots of good information about the battle. It's really Really nice. Uh, it's the only reason I went all the way up to Hokkaido. I went to Hokkaido to go to the Sapporo Beer Factory and to see Fort Goryokaku, the last stand of the Shinsengumi, because I am a nerd. If you come to Japan as a uh, tourist, you 1,520% must purchase a Japan Rail Pass. Oh no, it's all the noodles. There's no noodles left. Um, a Japan Rail Pass will save you a bajillion dollars. As a as a person with a working visa, yeah, 1,520%. I'm saying that because, for example, to give you a numerical reason, I said 1,520%. To take the Shinkansen from Tokyo to Kyoto, or from Kyoto to Nagoya, is $120 about. And if you go from Kyoto to Nagoya and Kyoto to Nagoya to Kyoto, that's 200 and some odd dollars. Uh, 
a rail pass for one week for seven days is like three hundred dollars. Yeah, one way from Tokyo to Nagoya, an hour and a half, two hours is a hundred is Ichiman Nisen, which is a hundred and twenty or twelve thousand yen, hundred and twenty dollars about, depending on what the exchange rate is. I just do it one for one. It's easier to figure it out that way. It's usually you get a little bit better rate with American money, but um, yeah. Uh, the rail pass is worth its weight in gold, especially if you're going to be traveling really long distances. So you might pay 300 US dollars for a seven day pass. It's, hey, you want to travel 300 kilometers in, in an hour and a half. That's the pat, the price you have to pay. I can't remember how much did it cost when I came from Tokyo. I took the Nozomi, which is the fastest Shinkansen. Yeah, I think it was about 120 bucks from Shinagawa. Well, I left from Shinagawa, not Tokyo. So I think it was a little bit less than that. But uh, the Shinkansen are very expensive. So the rail pass, if you're going to come here as a visitor, the rail pass is the way to go. Um, and they come in a 7, 14, or 21-day length. And you guys are lucky, man. The first time I ever came to Japan, maybe 13 years ago, uh, you could not buy the rail pass in Japan. You had to contact a distributor in America who you had to pay, and then they would send you a voucher, and you had to bring that voucher to Japan, and then go to the train station, then exchange it. Now you can just show up at the train station and be like, I'm a foreigner. I would like to buy a rail pass, and give them $300, and they give you a rail pass. And it's amazing, but it used to be a pain in the butt. All right, I have drinking all the beer and eaten 78% of the food. Uh, any more questions? Any more questions? Any more questions? Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's all I got. My nose is running from the steam from the hot pot. <laughs> I just, uh, it's a big show idea. I have a trailer. <laughs> Well, do do your preliminary research with the Abroad in Japan YouTube channel. Start at the beginning. His stuff is really great. Uh, and he answers questions. So, like, if you message him on Twitter, he, he will sometimes usually, like, 80% of the time respond to you unless he's just, like, really busy out filming. Uh, you can also send questions to the Abroad in Japan podcast at gmail.com. Uh, I only know because I've just been back to backing the episodes for the last week. Uh, and I've had to listen to them say it 13,000 times per episode. Uh, if you have questions, you can also send them there and he might answer them on the uh, podcast live. So Chris, Chris is awesome. I've never met him, but I want to meet him one day. I would love to uh, bring him to central Japan and show him the awesome bits that he always leaves out. Um, yeah. Oh no, we're only down to three viewers. Ah! <laughs> oh my goodness, my nose is running. I have to get a tissue. I'm sorry, everybody. I have to stand up and give you uh, not really dead air, but you're going to just have to watch me walk to the shelf behind me. Oh, Corona is still here. Oh, wait, I'll bring my lightsaber that I built and show it to you guys. Hold on. Ah, while I go get a tissue because my nose is running. All right, I got to put my slippers on. Hold on. I don't want to be heathen walking around in my bare feet. All right, first I'm going to walk over here. I'm going to grab a tissue. I'm going to go in here and get my lightsaber blade uh, that I put somewhere. Here it is. All right. Yeah. So when you do a lightsaber build, uh, you get to pick what type of... Here, I'll just bring everything over. I'll just show you guys everything. Show you everything. There's a... All right. I'm coming back. I have, oh, nope, gotta take my slippers off. Don't walk on the futon with your slippers on, Erica. Ah, all right, so, I have stuff. Ah, this thing's so heavy, hold on. Ah, I'm dropping everything. Crap! I'm very bad at this. I am not Chris Broad levels of great at this, uh, this video recording thing. Okay, so, here we go. Ah, so, this is the lightsaber I built. This is the Guardian. It's based off of the Jedi Temple Guard. 
Um, you get to pick, so this piece has different options and this piece has different options. And I think this piece has different options or these two pieces are options and then you can put them at the top or bottom, right? So here's the blade. This thing is heavy. It's metal. It's really, really heavy. Also, it looks like a pipe bomb when you go through the TSA security screener. Uh, and they will ask you about it because I I was going, they had my luggage and they were scanning it and I was walking through the body scanner when I heard a very distinctly, what the hell is that? And I was like, it's a lightsaber. I knew it was mine. I knew it was mine. Like I could just hear the guy all the way from, from the, the little scanny thing. And I was in the body scanner. The oh, hell is that? I was like, yeah, that's probably mine. All right. So you build this, it's modular, right? The pieces unscrew and like this, right? They unscrew all the pieces come off. And like I said, this thing it, oh, is really heavy. Like I said, it's metal. Uh, actually here, I'll show you, uh, because you can change the kyber crystal in it, right? So you take the top off, everything screws on with thread, right? Take the bottom off. This just slides off. There's a, it, it turns a little bit. This slides off. Uh, this is magnetic. It just pops off like that. Pops off like that. And you can see I have a yellow kyber crystal inside my lightsaber, but the kyber crystals just pop out just like that. So if you wanted to, for example, inside my kyber crystal holocron bag, uh, I have one, two, I have, I have different kyber crystals, right? This is the one for the yellow one. It has the original crystal, which was purple. I have a white one, uh, and then I have a red one. Um, I bought the red one because there is a rare one in like 100 variant black kyber crystal, and I'm so mad because the guy that I was there at the start at the at Disney World with pulled a black kyber crystal. Oh, so rare! They're really, really rare. Anyways, uh, so you can buy these little kyber crystals, and the tube unscrews, uh, and they're different kyber crystals. Right. I realize this is very erratic and has nothing to do with Japan, but I love my my lightsaber a lot. Right. So you take your kyber crystal and you force it. You force it in and it makes noises and lights up and lets you know when you've got the stupid crystal in the right spot. There you go. All right. See, blinky, blinky. Nice. Then you put your lightsaber back together. So there's a little blue mark here and there's a little blue mark on the lightsaber. It shows you which one goes on the top. And this one has a little red mark and there's a little red mark on the lightsaber. It shows you that that one goes on the bottom. All right, that snaps on. And then you put on your top piece and screw it a little bit and put on your bottom piece and screw it a little bit and put on your, in, the end cap is a pain in the butt to put on. Put on the end cap, like uh, the threading on it is really hard. Um, there we go. You gotta be careful with this one because you can screw up the, uh, the threading. And then you put the top piece on. And when you build the lightsaber, you take it out in a, they give you a bag. It's got the Jedi lightsaber symbol on it. It looks like a baseball bat bag. Um, and the blade, I have the blade in here. The blade is removable. And I swear it's removable. There we go. So, lightsaber blade. I have to say, I have a force effects combat saber that I love. Uh, but taking the blade out of that thing is a nightmare. This is amazing. You just take your lightsaber hilt. And you take your lightsaber blade. And you just push. And you're done. It's just pressure. You push and turn and it locks in. All right. And then ta -da. my dog hates my lightsaber. So he's going to come in here and bark at it probably. All right. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Floki, Floki hates the lightsaber so much. I don't know why. Right. So this blade is gold. It's really hard to see, but and these. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. I turned it off. Um, these are combat ready. The blades, the blades are combat ready. So like, you can fight with these and it's amazing. But man, they're heavy. This thing weighs like twice as much as my force effect saber, like wielding this. <laughs> Loki really hates the lightsaber, so it's okay. It's okay. I don't know why Floki doesn't like my lightsaber, but he really doesn't. He he re let's see. Hold on, I'm gonna turn it this way. There we go. He really doesn't like the lightsaber. Watch. Doesn't like it. Doesn't like the lightsaber. <laughs> he's such a critic he doesn't like the lightsaber at all uh anyways i know i don't know what's wrong i have no idea he's always hated it when i got my it's okay hey hey it's okay baby when i first got my uh when it, it, it's foot loki f-l-o-k-i it's not like watch See? Even just holding it. There's no sound. He just he just <laughs> He just really hates my lightsaber. I have no idea why. When I got my force effects lightsaber, he was the same way. He was just he really hates it. He really hates the lightsaber. When it's on, when it's off. He's okay with it when it I think When it's just the hilt, no problem. He doesn't like the blade. I, I, I have no idea. No idea, guys. <laughs> he just, he doesn't like the lightsaber blade. Oh, it's okay. Lightsaber hilt? No problem. Doesn't mind the lightsaber hilt. Lightsaber blade? Absolutely can't stand it. I can't explain it to you. I When I first brought my lightsaber home from uh, Dragon Con a million years ago, he was the same way. In fact, I have a video of it, of him just losing his mind uh, when I brought that first lightsaber home. But we're going to put the blade back in the... Uh, uh, no, it's F. F is in Foxtrot. F, F, stop it! Don't you attack this. <laughs> All right, it's gone. See, it's in the case. It's bye bye. It's bye bye. It's bye bye. Anyways, uh, yeah. So uh, F L O K I, like the character from the Vikings TV show. Um, I also bought a Jedi holocron. Ooh. Ooh, right, we're going to open it. One. This is Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. I regret to report that both our Jedi Order and the Republic have fallen, with the dark shadow of the Empire rising to take their place. This message is a warning and a reminder for any surviving Jedi. Trust in the Force. Do not return to the temple. That time has passed. And our future is uncertain. We will each be challenged. Our trust, our faith, our friendships. But we must persevere. And in time, a new hope will emerge. May the force be with you. Right. Always. So now we're going to close the holocron and we are going to open the secret compartment. 
Ah. Let's see. Uh, view, viewer vote. Should we put in the white kyber crystal, the purple kyber crystal, or the red one? Which one you guys want to see? Purple, white, or red? Purple, white, or red? Pur uh, purple, white, or red? Purple, white, or red? Put it in the live chat. Purple, white, or red? Purple, white, or red? Come on. There's six of you. You all get a voice. This is your time to vote. Purple, okay? There's one for purple. Purple. Two for purple. Three for purple. All right, purple it is. Purple is the color that I got with the lightsaber originally, uh, which is why it's in the yellow kyber crystal vial, right? Purple. I guess it looks a little blue there, but it's definitely purple. All right. So we're going to put the purple kyber crystal into the Jedi holocron. We're going to turn one. We're gonna turn to you. Now it's really hard to see, but it's glowing purple now instead of uh, blue. So now we're going to unlock the magical, uh, let's see, you gotta hold it a certain way, hold on. There we go. In war as in peace, we must trust the force. We must follow the path that is set before us. And we must defend those who cannot defend themselves. It's Sam Jackson, Mace Windu. When war throws everything into confusion, look to the Jedi teachings for clarity. I really wanted it to be like, I wish a motherfucking Sith would, but it doesn't. Emotions have power that discipline cannot contain. A Jedi must beware of unleashing that power for fear of never being able to control it again. In negotiations, there are gray areas. In war, there are not. A warrior can't afford them. There's only right and wrong, good and evil, light and dark, and victory or defeat. The Jedi are the guardians of peace in the galaxy, but that can mean being a sword instead of a shield. That can mean being a sword instead of a shield. In war as in peace. All right, all right. So there are quite a few pre-programmed um, sayings into it, but you have to cycle through a lot. So there are special points on the cube that you touch. You have to touch two of them at the same time to make it work. <laughs> I've had it with this mother effing Sith on this mother effing ship. Yeah, I wish. Uh, so those are Jedi. Oh, 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 oh. I'm dropping my kyber crystals. Mace Windu would not be happy. Ah, so these are Jedi kyber crystals, right? But what happens if you put a Sith kyber crystal in a Jedi holocron? The lime in the coconut. What happens, hmm? All right, so we got red. Ta -da. I, if I had an Alexa, Sam Jackson would be the voice of Alexa. Oh, 100%, I love it. All right, so we're going to put our red kyber crystal into the Jedi holocron. All right. One. Two. Ooh, spoopy. It's glowing red. Ooh. All right, now we got to find the magic points. Ready? Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? <clears throat> Always two there are. No more, no less. A master and an apprentice. Everywhere. Anger, fear, aggression. The dark side are they. Watch you start down the dark path. Forever will it dominate your destiny. Attachment leads to jealousy. The shadow of greed, that is. Everywhere. Anger, fear, aggression. The dark side are they. Watch you 
just start down the dark path. So sometimes you have to cycle through a while to get the different comments. Destiny. Careful you must be when sensing the future. The fear of loss is a path to the dark side. Adventure. Hey, hey, segment. Hey, hey, Jedi craves not these things. You are reckless. So. Right. It's pretty cool. Uh, <clears throat> if you put the Jedi kyber crystals in the Sith holocron, you almost always get Sidious. Uh, but the black kyber crystal gave my friend, we didn't get a name, but I'm almost positive it was Plagius. Uh, some of the stuff he was saying was very Plagius-esque, right? But this is the Jedi holocron. It's really big, right? Really big. Quite large. This thing's huge. Uh, that's what she said. Uh, and it comes in this cool little bag. It literally says on it, Black Spire Outpost. Um, it comes with, it was expensive. It was uh, $49.99. You can see it says Jedi Holocron for ages three and up. Uh, and there's a little instruction booklet on the inside that shows you how to make it some of the stuff work but there are all there are also uh extra things you can do and it comes with a charging cable because it charges via mini usb so uh, yeah so the lightsaber was uh the lightsaber build at savi's lightsaber uh yeah savi's workshop hand-built lightsabers um it was 199 199 dollars um, it is also not rechargeable. Uh, it takes three AAA batteries, uh, which are a pain in the butt to put in, I believe. Uh, you have to take a screw out. I think it's just one screw, though. Um, yeah, so, but it's hefty. It's combat ready. The blade just literally pressure snaps in, pressure snaps out. You can change the kyber crystal in it really easily. Uh, and it's combat ready, which is amazing. Um, yeah. So that's all I got right now. It's uh, officially 545, which means it's time to go to the bar. So thank you all for joining me. If you uh, originally came here for uh, hot pot cooking and have ended up uh, <laughs> through the wild and wandering path of stuff about Japan and Star Wars and Disney World and Vic and uh all kinds of random stuff. I'm not great at staying on topic. Not great at all. So, uh, yeah. If you guys like wild and ambling uh, conversations, thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if my date fizzles out tomorrow, I will go on a little video tour of the temple slash shrines that I wanted to visit. If the date doesn't fizzle out, then maybe I'll pop online after I'm done with it and give you guys the lowdown on my Tinder date. Um, other than that, that's all. Floki, my co-host, has been wonderful other than losing his mind at the lightsabers. Um, and, uh... Uh, I will, it'll be uploaded in just a little bit, Kisebek, so if you want to go back and watch the first, uh, half, you're more than welcome to, if not, just, if you haven't given it a thumbs up, thank you, uh, go over and subscribe to, at, uh, Abroad in Japan, if you like Japanese stuff, if you don't, don't, don't subscribe, but if you like just stuff about Japan, I really highly suggest his work, he's awesome, uh, and I realize I'm not, like, a famous internet person, but, I like what I like, so if I can help out someone I like, I'd like to give him some stuff. I think he's got Patreon, he's got Twitter, his Instagram is always quite interesting to follow because he always updates photos really, really awesomely. Uh, the podcast is great. You can get it for free on Spotify. I have Spotify right now, and I can listen to it. Um, but yeah, that's it uh, from Ari Means apartment in central Japan. I hope you all have a great morning or afternoon or whatever time it is in the world where you are. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. End stream.